Kim Mitchell says there's more to him than just rock. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Canada. Kim Mitchell is primarily a rocker. We know him from Max Webster as being a real rock and roll star. His solo career did change that a little bit, even though his most popular songs are rockers. There's the slower ones like All We Are, and there's country-flavored ones like Easy to Tame. We talk about all those things, stereotyping, and more in the next few clips with Kim Mitchell. With, you know, even going back to it, Max Webster, you, you'd always come up with these, like, pretty tunes. And, and I know the rockers and proggers are the worst because I do a lot of Genesis <laughs> interviews and I just interviewed John Anderson and that was a whole... Did you? Yeah, you know, those guys, those guys, you have to get out your slide ruler and calculator when you start talking to them, right? It's, but it's really different. I noticed that the, you start noticing different factions of fans. The, the proggers are hard. And I'm a progger. And I, uh, yep, when I release it, like, when, like I did a Steve Hackett thing and I put it on there. And it's like they wouldn't accept me because they didn't know who I was. Because I'm a radio guy. And I just started doing YouTube five years ago. And it's almost like I'd say, okay, I've interviewed all these guys. I know this guy. I've had all these albums. I had Selling England by the Panel. Leave me alone. But going back to Max Webster, and, and you're still doing that with a new song, you do it. You, you, you have, is it because a soft song comes out, it just turns that way? Because, I mean, the rockers will go, come on, Kim Mitchell, rock. Yeah, interesting comment. Um, reading comments, I, I, I can honestly say there weren't about wishes. There, I haven't read hardly anything that was negative. The only thing that relates to what you just said was one guy went, yeah, that's a nice ditty. Now let's get back to the rock. It's like, dude, you know, we're we're not thirty. We're not in our twenties. It's um, this stuff was always part of of what I did. Words to words, diamonds, diamonds. Um, you know, I'm one wrong. of my biggest songs was Patio Landrons was not a rock tune. Easy to tame. All we are. Girls were coming to shows after that song. You know, um, so. That's always been part of my thing. And when I had the demos for all this, Greg, producer, said he he heard it. I gave him the USB key of shame, and he's like, "This is a side of you that that your audience needs to be exposed to again, and and in and in a good way. Let's 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 go in this direction. They know rock and roll duty. Go for soda. I'm a wild party. That stuff's great stuff. That's what what they know you for. But also, there's this side of you that's wonderful that." It is very musical, and let's 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 focus on that. Does that make any sense? I don't. Yeah, know. of yeah. course it did. Bob, I don't know if you know Bob Reed. He's a radio guy from Toronto. I do know that name. Yeah, Bob Reed. Uh, he says, uh, "Easy to tame." Is it is it hard to? Uh, oh, easy to tame the three. What are the three wishes? That's what he. Asked. I never. We never tell. We we made a thing. Oh, it that is we something. It tell. is something. We would. We made a thing. Well, uh, it says right on the cover: the three wishes all begin with the letter H. Yeah. And that's as far as we take it. I get no a feeling it's not know. PG. Uh, that's all I have to say. It might not be. It might be. not be. You know, Bruce Hornsby didn't have a piano on his last album. Not the new one. The one before oh. this one. It's This is the sequel that just came out. I just, I got it early and I was, it took me three weeks to get used to it. And uh, because, and you'll appreciate this, Bruce Hornsby brought me to the blues. Bruce Hornsby brought me to uh, Matheny esque, uh, or even Grateful Dead, which I didn't like because he had played mm -hmm. with Jerry Bruce Hornsby. I trusted because I, I loved his voice so much; it almost didn't matter. And I love the fact that he was brave. You know, he is brave. <clears throat> He's brave. He's a, a insane piano player. You don't you don't meet a keyboard player, a piano player who doesn't remove their hat and take a knee when when that name comes up. He's, he's that good. I know some cats here in Toronto that are insane piano players. And as soon as you mention Bruce Hornsby, they're like, eat Burton Cummings. Same thing. Like, Burton, you rock chops on the piano. It's like, he goes, yeah, man, I'm just nowhere near a guy like Bruce Hornsby, though. Like, to to come from, you know, that's, that's cool. The, the, I have big respect for Bruce Hornsby. He, when he, do, he does a live version of End of the Innocence that uh, blows my lights out. There's, there's a soprano sax solo in the middle, and I'm like, all the back phrasing that he does, if you know what back phrasing is, the pulse is doing this, and he's yeah. he's singing way behind like Sinatra used to do. All that back phrase, the band's like got this thing going. They're like catching up you know, in a beautiful way, though. I'm doing a thing on Bruce, so I'll include that. I've got a lot of musicians, because he comes up a lot in, in my interviews, and people just go on. I'm going, well, I, I should just combine these and do a, a thing. Uh, on. The last uh, time I talked yeah, to him, 
The last time I talked to him was 92. I've been trying to get an interview ever since. He doesn't like to talk to rock. He thinks I'm just a rock guy, but I do everything. Um, his, his twins were babies, and he was practicing seven hours a day. Wow. Crazy. That's that's huge. He must have had one pissed off wife then because that ba- young babies looking after young babies. Yeah, but I don't hope- you how could you not have a little country in you? How can that how can an artist usually especially growing up in Canada, growing up in in Ontario, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter where you are. Uh um uh, even the new one, even the new one has a slight slight oh, country. Yeah, my my children said that and I said, "Well, kids, in Sarnia, when I was 17, before I started to play show bands and go head my my little ass off to Greece on a Greek island, I said, your dad played in a band in Sarnia, Ontario called Dick Dixon and the Stone Mountain Band. <laughs> it was. I was playing in a country band for a summer. The, the bass player was a cop. And <laughs> like playing at this bar, doing all the country stuff. Remember, we have several clips from Kim Mitchell on both our channels. This one, Rock History Canada, and our big channel, Rock History Music. There'll be links to all the videos in the description of this video. Also links to Kim Mitchell's website and links to buying t-shirts from any one of our channels. Help support our channels. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Canada.